our deep work day and it also happens to be the last day of our sprint so I'm going to be spending this morning prepping for a design handoff that we do asynchronously. So I mentioned this before but all of our team is spread out throughout the continent and it's just really difficult for us to find a time that works for all of us in order to have meetings and to be honest we're actually all like very meeting adverse and we don't really like a lot of meetings to begin with so we decided to do our design handoffs asynchronously in order to just get rid of that whole need for a meeting. And I want to give a huge thank you to Loom for sponsoring this portion of the video. Loom is a really amazing tool for hybrid or remote teams like mine in order for us to share our work. And it has totally changed the game for us when it comes to our design handoffs. So instead of us trying to find a time within our four to five different time zones, all I have to do now is go to Loom so that I can record my screen and my camera so that I can explain the design and my design decisions. So what I really love about Loom is that you can record both the screen and your face like the camera at the same time because okay this, this might be a little bit like corporate me talking but I find it is so so difficult for me to focus on like just a screen recording in a video because it just it feels really boring like it's really hard for me to pay attention to and not want to skip forward on because I feel like this is not very human so when Loom gives you that option to record the camera as well I just feel like so much more engaged with the speaker and it creates such a good human experience that I find myself getting better feedback from my viewers so when I do this for design handoffs I usually like to talk about how I've laid out the entire design file what they can do with the different annotations how they can view the prototype and any kind of like other details that are easily missed because maybe they're like very small and minute details that are difficult to find if you're not too familiar with Figma. And then after I finish the video I just have to share my link with the team and that's it. So I usually like to put the link in Slack or I put it in Linear where we track our tickets. We also use Loom for our sprint demos where we update the rest of the company on new designs and new features. So the developers and I collaborate on this by using Loom's stitch feature. One of us would start the video on Loom and then the rest of us would go in to edit and click the add clips button to complete our portion of the demo. And all of the videos recorded with Loom can be saved in a team library that you can organize and refer to when needed. So I have my little design Loom section over here. If you're interested in trying out Loom, you can use the link in my description. And again, a huge thank you to Loom for sponsoring this portion of the video. today is the last day of our sprint I think I'm gonna take some time and update our design system just because it's falling a little bit behind so basically when I first started at the company one of the things that I got done first was set up our design system now it's not completely done because there's no point in creating a design system if you're just trying to throw together components in order to like complete it or finish off a checklist. So in this sprint, something new that we ended up creating was a toggle component. And it's not in the design system right now and that's what I'm going to be adding today. I've also been more focused on creating short form content. So reels, TikToks, and shorts. And the first thing or like my first series that I'm doing right now, and I think the first episode is probably going to be up by the time that this video is up, is creating a design system. And I'm actually gonna show you guys like how I put together every single component and what kind of documentation I do. So if you're interested in checking that out, then make sure to follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. Hello and good morning. So today I am going to start off the day by doing a meeting with my CEO and my CXO. Basically every two weeks or so we have a meeting with the three of us and we just kind of talk about like how the product is going and you know just an extra I guess alignment meeting to make sure we're all on the same page about just like the product vision and if we're going down the roadmap like is there anything else we need to change or prioritize differently so we usually have this meeting every two weeks and it's just the three of us kind of talking and I guess like converging on our ideas for the product I really enjoy this meeting honestly because it's really nice being able to see like from the founders themselves like what kind of 
product they envision and especially when I just started like I started as a lead product designer for the company right but like people have been working on the product for years before and just being put in this role I definitely started off feeling like I had to understand everything very very quickly but that didn't happen because it's kind of unrealistic right like how was I supposed to get all of that knowledge and all that context that has been happening for like years and then just be able to pick it up within like a, a month or so? So I, I was actually quite like frustrated with myself, especially at the beginning, like the first month or so when I first started because I didn't feel like I was picking it up quick enough. And like in order to make good decisions, I felt like I just needed that context. So sometimes I would say something and I'd be like, hmm, what if we've already had that discussion before? Or what if I'm missing another piece of context? and that really made me like doubt myself so that was hard for me to deal with luckily I I've always had like a very good vibe from this company and I think I've talked to you guys about this before but I've always thought that this company was like a very good place for me or for any other designer to work just because the vibe is good and it's like a, a safe psychological space, right? So a safe psychological space is just a environment that people feel comfortable sharing their ideas, giving their opinions, and like thinking outside the box, which is super, super important, especially when working in like a creative problem solving kind of field like, like UX design. I feel like very fortunate that I am able to feel like I can actually share these kind of more like vulnerable thoughts with with my manager here but anyways like when i was talking to them about like feeling like that um i got a really like good response and basically they just told me like they didn't expect me to be able to pick up everything within like the first three months or so it's going to take time but it's time and it's an, an investment that they feel like is worth it because what they said was like that they see i have a creative eye and they feel like I can bring a lot of value and be very impactful in the direction and the design of the product. So just like hearing that they had that kind of confidence in me, it was super, super motivating. And yeah, I just like felt really good when I heard that. They also just took, told me to like take my time with it. And you know, it's not about doing things fast. It's about doing things right. And I really just appreciate how they were like vocal about it and just sharing that thought with me because it did help me feel a lot better once I first started. I'm just gonna finish off my makeup and probably change my shirt because I'm still in my pajamas. But yeah, after that meeting, we do have some other work to do, but for now, I'll just keep going with this and get ready for the meeting. Suntan, sunscreen, strawberry, ice cream, midsummer's daydream, sipping in between, long days, warm nights, gliding like light kites, sapphire, clear skies, whipped cream, cherry pies. around June 21st yeah. Ooh, I slip in my swimsuit Diving head first Everything's coming up Roses, peachy I feel like the world is Finally swaying in the sunshine Oh my, my, my It's looking so fun Divine Fields of lavender Provence weather so I just finished all of my meetings and I've been sitting in this position for a very long time. I feel like my legs are asleep. It's gonna be difficult getting up to walk after, but the meetings went really well. So my first one was that sync meeting and we were working on a new feature. So I had like two options, one that I liked a little better and I'm glad that we're all on the same page. So I think we're just gonna iterate on that a little bit more to see if any like new feedback comes in and then we can really start working on, you know, just how are we going to put this together and complete it for our next quarter. After that, we had our sprint review meeting and usually in that one, like have a pretty good sense about what's going on at least from the product side basically because like you know I'm working pretty closely with the developers so I know what they're working on I know what they're blocked on and they like they in turn know what I'm working on and everything so I had a pretty good sense about what's happening there but it's really nice being able to talk like directly with the customer success people you know who are just helping our users and like answering any of their questions dealing with any of their pain points seeing what they say and also with our sales team and how they're like 
talking to our potential clients, our potential users, and what kind of features or things down the pipeline they are really looking for or would really sell them on our product. So all of that was really nice. And finally, we had our sprint planning meeting. And that was okay too. It's just a little weird because I am taking time off. Like I'm off for the rest of the week after today. And it, it, I don't know, it's like I'm planning for the sprint, but I'm also leaving for half of it, which is kind of odd, but you know, there's, I think that's just how the timing ended up working out. But yeah, that was a really good meeting too. Nothing too surprising. It's just basically like trying to fit in as many things as I can in my sprint and hopefully getting them done or at least like even starting on things that I think might take a little bit more time so that when I come back, I can be ready to complete them. So yeah, all that stuff is really good. I think it's time for us to have lunch. And when I come back, we'll just have a few more meetings and yeah. <laughs> Everything's coming up roses Peachy, I feel like the world is Finally swaying in the sunshine Oh my, 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 it's looking so fun Diva, uh, So I have a coffee chat with one of my coworkers. We do this pretty much every two weeks where we get paired up with someone randomly in the company and then we have like a half hour coffee chat just to catch up and talk to each other. So as... <laughs> Um, I'll be totally honest with you, when I first started at this company, I was super not looking forward to this. I remember we actually tried this at the beginning of the pandemic with one of my older companies and the idea was that we would get randomly paired up with like four different people in the company um, in order to boost that like whole water cooler chatting in the hallway kind of thing that we used to have and I just remember like as you guys know how introverted I am right so like as we started doing that I would just get the most nervous and like anxious and I just hate doing it so so much that I would like purposely plan meetings with like clients or like other things book appointments or whatever during that time slot that we would have it in just so I can avoid it but I, I think the issue here was that it was with like three other people and that was just like too many people <laughs> for me to be able to feel comfortable being around but now at my current company it's just one-on-one -on -one and like that is actually like a lot easier for me. I do not handle group environments very well. I get very, very quiet. So like being able to talk to just one person at a time has been really, really nice. But yeah, our company is like just a startup, right? So it's not too big. And honestly, like I've at least seen every person and heard them talk in meetings. We also have like a Friday happy hour slash like, I don't know, like a hangout session that we always do. So. I think like in that sense everything is a lot better but man I just remember what it was like at my old company and how like just freaking stressful <laughs> that whole initiative was. I'm pretty sure a lot of other people felt the same way I did because it only lasted for like I want to say a month or so and then after they were just like yeah it's not really working for us so they just decided to cancel it. Okay I'm gonna get into my one-on-one -on -one with my coworker, and I will talk to you guys after. So I wanted to give you guys an update on my like my whole burnout status and how I'm feeling. I'm doing my weekly reflection that I have in my good notes and I'm just gonna kind of talk about how I've been feeling lately and before I take off for my little vacation that I'm going on. So I've been rereading my past journaling entries and I've just noticed that the overall tone has definitely gotten a lot more like positive, less frustrated and more optimistic on like where I'm going with my career, on how fulfilled I feel working on the projects I am. And just in general, like I think even my husband is telling me just how much happier I seem overall. And I definitely feel it too. And like just the people around me have been saying the same thing. The latest thing that I've been really trying to work through when it comes to journaling is how I feel as the designer I am today. So I'm still like working on kind of figuring out how I truly feel about this or what the root issue is for me but I guess the easiest way I can say it is that I feel a little bit almost guilty in a sense because I really like the people I work with at my company. I really like our CEO, I like our product and honestly like there's so much alignment between what kind of work I want to do and the work I get to do at my current company. 
but after like my previous experience i definitely don't feel like i'm the same designer i was when i first started my ux career like you guys already know that when i first started my ux career i basically did something related to ux every single day i was always practicing strategizing designing working on something and you know with my past experience like i definitely kind of stopped doing that and i guess where the guilt is coming from now is like i wish i was still that designer for my current company like in my heart i already know i'm doing all the work that i should be doing i'm doing it to the best of my abilities but in a very like twisted way the most blunt way i can say this is like if i was the designer that i used to be when i first started in ux then i would be working round the clock instead of actually having some work life balance and boundaries and there's part of me that feels guilty that i'm not that designer anymore i think in my heart i know i shouldn't feel guilty about this but it is there but anyway that's kind of what i've been journaling about and what i've been trying to work through i do talk to like my husband and my family about this kind of feeling but i thought i would share it here because usually when i like talk to you guys about what i'm feeling i kind of like work it all out so that i can show you like the end result and i don't have to like leave you guys on a cliffhanger or anything but yeah at this point i really don't know and i might as well just share with you guys now because i think like i posted that video about like my whole quitting process and i'll, I'll link the video here but i think at the end of the video i kind of gave this really like nice wrapped up conclusion that i'm feeling a lot better and it's like i close that chapter and we're not like that as people the emotions and memories that we make they stay with us and we use them as wisdom so i it's not really right for me to say like that was that video that was done that was published and i'm done feeling all those things because it's still i guess lingering and it's still just a work in progress so yeah i i don't want to always just tell you guys things after it happens i definitely want to be more open about things i'm currently going through because seeing that process maybe it can help some of you who are also feeling the same way yeah i think i'm just gonna write out my weekly reflection and after that just start enjoying my time off i'm taking time off because coming up this saturday is actually going to be my birthday and i haven't really taken a vacation so i i wanted to take some time off especially like in this period of time so that i can you know take a break and enjoy time with my family and do some other things that I've been planning to get done. So yeah, I think this takes us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching as always, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.